What's up everyone, Charlie aka Wolfman here and tonight is the premiere of Iron Man, a new West Ham documentary about the last couple precious games at Upton Park and the stories of the people who went there. Now, Hammers Chat have been given a press pass to go which means we're going to get there, we're going to interview some of the players hopefully, possibly even a few people you might recognise and then afterwards I'm going to grab some reactions from the fans, the people who went in, see how they thought about the film, see how emotional they found it and what they felt like on those last couple of games at Upton Park. Let's get to it. So you've just come out of uh, the Iron Man premiere. What do you think of the film? I thought it was great. It captured sort of, uh, I think for me, it was the emotions of the day, the season. Um, yeah, all of it. It was great. It was really good. The way the end of the season worked out, it, it is almost film-like in itself. Even the last game going down against Manchester United. What were your emotions like on that day, seeing us triumph? in just the most spectacular fashion. I think the, the beginning of it was the Swansea game where we lost 4-1. You just thought, our oh, season, that, it's the same old West Ham, same old. But then on the day, it was, uh, yeah, you go, we, we literally said in the middle of the film, as soon as we went 2-1, Marshall scored the second, your heart sunk, that was it. And then when we got the second, yeah, you, you felt like it was coming. You felt, and then obviously Reed, that was it. The, the emotions were incredible. Yeah, amazing. You've just come out of Iron Men, the premiere. Uh, what did you think? I thought it was brilliant. It was it was really emotional, and it's very captivating to the audience. What do you think about Mabel specifically? I mean, every time she came on the screen, there was almost a standing ovation for everything she said. There really was. Well. You've got to respect the lady. She's, she, you know, she's supported the club for so long, and longer than anyone could imagine supporting the club for. So you've all just come out of the Iron Man premiere. Uh, what did you all think? Uh, it, it was a brilliant film. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, you're holding up the copy there. Uh, who is your favourite person in the film specifically? Uh, I think Mabel. Mabel. Cause Mabel. Yeah. Mabel. Why Mabel? Um, uh, she, 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 she's been there for every single match, and I think that's. That's, that's a, a good thing for the team. So, Charlie, you've just come out of the Iron Man premiere. Yes. Uh, what did you think? You know what? There are so many things which I could say, really. Uh, it, it, was, it was a beautiful movie, but it, it really was. Yeah. And I think the best thing about that movie was that it wasn't just for West Ham. It's, it's a footballer. If you love football, it's a great movie to watch. Yeah. 100%. Like, like you watch it and you think, OK, this is something that like, I, I, I can't actually yeah. put it into words because you watch it and you think, okay, it's actually, it's not, it's not propaganda. It's on both sides. And the way that it was formatted is that you see the people, the negativity towards moving to the Olympic Park. Yeah. You see the positives. Yeah. It, it was a great movie. Like, I, I can't really say much more. On a scale of one to 10, zero being not at all, 10 being you're just uncontrollably crying. How close do you? How close were you? How close was I? Yeah. Because I'll be honest, I was, I was close. rather close. I'm, I'm saying nine then because I, I was close. I was very close to crying. It, there were a few moments like if, if Mabel out there, Mabel 100, if she sees this, she's never going to see it. But She's down there. Oh, is really? she? Yeah. <gasps> I might have to say hi. Like, honestly. I, I, I was considering it. If uh, I didn't have to do this, I was going to be... <laughs> Mabel! <laughs> we'll go there after. We'll go there after. But um, she... Part of it is, is that it, it's such a beautiful community that West Ham have. I was lucky enough to be able to get tickets here and there, here and there, yeah. because of economic uh, economic circumstances of my family, like I couldn't afford a season ticket. Yeah. Um, but seeing people like that lady over there, the Rib Man, yeah. Olas Man, yeah. You, you know exactly what West Ham's about, and that's exactly what it's about. It's about that community. It's the people who love it, who, who would sacrifice so much to be able to witness West Ham. Uh, you've just come out of the Iron Men premiere. Uh, what did you think? I thought it 
thought it was decent. I thought that um, it, it encompassed the story quite well because obviously there's positives and negatives involved with the stadium move and the final season of bowling and whatnot. And I think they captured the the mood of that final game fantastically. And you know, some people haven't been happy about the mood, and there's an element uh, about the move. There's an element of that in the film. But overall, pretty positive, pretty emotional for West Ham fans, I'd say. Um, you've just come out of the Iron Men premiere. What did you think? Go on, well, mate. I'll, no, I'll let you go first. Um, emotional. It's reliving it all. That's, that's probably the first time I've really watched that game back. And it was good how they filmed it, wasn't it? And, uh, but building up to it, seeing all the different fans' point of view, like Mark the Ribman, Mabel, God bless her. Uh, even the players, like Noble what it meant to him but no it was it was a, it's a great film it's a great film I'd recommend it for any football fan not just West Ham football fans all around the world I think uh, yeah I think what he touched on there apart from the fans perspective that we are fans and we know what goes through our minds I think the perspective from Slav and Noble um, really opened my eyes a little bit because sometimes you sit there and think do they care do they really care they're just doing a job but it really did show that they did care and um, Slav had some uh, you know some 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 controversial things to say when he said like if you want a proper game of football like you know you come to the Bolin and not Westfield and uh, I think that the perspective from them was was the real eye opener for me but um, the the film was brilliant I really enjoyed the film um, I really enjoyed the pace of the film it, it, it was comedic at times it was you know emotional at times. And, you know, I, I really couldn't have, have wished for a better film to watch tonight, to be quite honest with you. I thought it was really good. And I think the, the, the crowd was really good in there because, like, they was all singing the funny bit when Pyatt come on the screen and everyone just booed him. Yeah. And, uh, no, it was great. But one bit I loved about the film, from a personal point of view, was, like, seeing Mark Noble walking around Canning Town. He's literally, Hermit Road Park is literally... 20 seconds away from my mum's house. I'll be honest, I so never like, knew he lived there. Yeah. I never knew he lived yeah, there. Yeah, nice. Um, no, it was great. Great to see it. But, no, I love, I, you know, my feelings for Noble and to see a Canning Town boy go on and captain the club. And he's the last. He's, he'll always be in our history. Always be in our history as the last captain to ever captain a team at the bowling ground. What about when Noble was standing in the middle of pitch, giving essentially almost a eulogy to the stadium? I mean, just watching it again there, I mean, I almost teared up personally. No, we all did. We all did. That's the trouble. Now, when he, um, I think it was the key comment when he said about his West Ham family and all that stuff. It was, uh, that, that was, yeah, that, that was why it was the key part of the, his little eulogy in the film there. It was amazing when he, when he said that. People have got his compl their complaints about him now, but he's West Ham through and through. That, and, uh, he's probably, unfortunately, the last one we'll have of that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, but yeah, legend, and he summed it up well. That's the uh, that's the thing. What did you think about Mark Noble when he's talking about like going to play football at the park and how now he's the captain of West Ham United? Uh, well, he seemed quite well. And in the end, he seemed quite emotional because of like the um, the change of stadium and how um, well you know in the future they'll they're going to extend the stadium and um, it's going to become. You know, all for West Ham is going to be getting better. Someone who's featured prominently in the film is Mark Noble, Captain Fantastic, Mr. West Ham. Um, I mean, he stood in the centre circle and gave almost a eulogy to the stadium in something that I think it will go down kind of in West Ham history, that speech. What do you think about Mark Noble? Obviously, he's featured heavily in the film and just his rise to the basically the top of the club and being the man at West Ham. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Mark Noble's been a great ambassador for the club. I mean, he's been there since a youngster. I'm not many players can say that and very impressed with the way he's uh, conducted himself for the club uh, and a great uh, a player and he's just uh, every time he's, he approaches the field you know you're going to get 100% from Mark Noble and, and the way he's, I say, he's, he's prepared and conducted himself off the pitch is very impressive and uh, yeah I've got a lot of uh, good words to say about Mark. I've been going to the uh, West Ham ground since the 60s and um, Mark is one that's going to stand out for me uh, for a long, long time and hopefully for a few more years yet. That's what I was going to say. I mean, Mark plays a very prominent role in the film. I mean, out of all the players, he is the most prominent for obvious reasons. Um, how weird is it knowing that, like you say, a boy from Canning Town, one of our own, he's come all the way through the youth ranks in the modern day football age. He's the captain of this club and we've just gone into a cinema and watched a documentary that's he's very heavily based on it's him walking around his house asking for his keys from his wife and all that I mean 
what you're I mean Mark obviously gets his detractors for obvious reasons and for rightly or wrongly whatever but I find it almost impossible not to just love him after watching that he he up to my, he up to my in this day of an age of football when there's so much movement there's so much disloyalty there's so much um, foreign money foreign players in the league you know I'm I'm a big critic of Mark Noble um, you know as as many Ryan loves him I, I love him but I'm so so with his with his style of play but I'll be honest I couldn't wish for a better captain for the club and like just to have a, a local boy who knows what the history means at the bowling you know he, he, even before he started playing there 12 years ago um, he'd been going there all his life you know, he come up from Canning Town, same area as me. I didn't. I did. I. will be honest with you. I didn't know he come from that bit of bit of Canning Town. Like, he, he, you know, he played in the same places we played as a, as a kid. Um, he's probably a similar age, and he's a bit younger than us. Um, just a bit younger than us. So we would have crossed paths at some point, I'm sure. But you know, t t for him to have the captaincy of the club, I, I, I love most. You know, I, I couldn't wish it on upon a better person. It's you know. I've always back. I love Mark Noble. I love it's, it's for me. It's like having a fan on the pitch. And uh, if I was to change one thing from that last game at the bowling, I'd have him score the winner. That's the only thing I'd change because it had just been perfect. But you know, that'd have been a penalty instead of a, of a free kick. Yeah, no. It's, you know, just watching Noble. There, you just see what it means to him. You know, even Gam in the training where he shakes everyone's hand before training, after training. That's what a captain is. And and the thing is, he learned from people before him like Kevin Nolan, Scott Parker. You know, he learned from good captains. I know that Parker weren't our captain, but he sort of was our captain, you know. And uh, he's just showed in last season, that season at the bowling, if you could pick Mark Noble to have one special season, it would be that one. And we was all calling for him to play for England. And this is what really gets on my nerves when I see fans getting on his back. I've seen him he's lose. punched me a couple of times. I've, <laughs> seen, I've seen him lose the ball once and everyone's on his back. But then I've seen someone like Obiang lose the ball and everyone's not on his back. And it's like, look, it's like having a fan on the pitch, you know, and no boys West Ham through and through, and that's what we've always grown up with, having a pl players like that. And they're getting very rare now, very rare. Just talk us through again your emotions on that final day, at that when we were leaving, when Mark Noble was standing in the centre circle, giving his kind of eulogy to the stadium almost. I mean, what were your emotions that day, really? I was with Ethan on that day. So Ethan sent me a message probably about two weeks prior when we said I've got us tickets to go to the game and I swear to God I saw that that text message and my heart literally just fluttered because I've been trying to get as many tickets as I could for the last season I said I have to watch it and the way it came about I just I got I got that text message heart fluttered I was like I am there I am there what did you think what was your emotions on that last day uh, when we beat Man United how were you feeling just about everything really I felt really sad, to be honest. And if I am honest, I'm not a West Ham fan, but I do feel sad for the Patriots because I love football myself. And being a football fan, seeing West Ham fans going through what they've been through, it is really emotional for me. What were your emotions when we left that day at beating Man United? Um, I'm not afraid to admit that I struggled a little bit that day. I mean, how were you feeling watching it sort of unfurling almost an amazing movie like fashion yeah it, it, it was a mix of emotions because as much it, as it was the the culmination of a, a long period in all of our lives uh, most of us have grown up with that ground with that the euphoria that surrounds that ground everything that, that encompasses West Ham was, was was around the bowling and Upton Park um, but at the same time I think that was kind of um, a period of, of galvanisation really between everyone. I think everyone came together um, that night. The supporters, the team, the club as a whole. Um, it, it was a night where everyone was, was at, at one together. Um, and it, it, it was a fine farewell. It, it, was, um, it was the way to go. It was the way Upton Park should be, um, should be said goodbye to. You say you're not a West Ham fan, so you, you look at people like I mean, do you support a specific team first of all, just to ask? So I support Liverpool and Liverpool are all about the passion and seeing this from Upton Park and the last day at the Bowling, I see a lot of passion from the West Ham fans, which really means a lot to me personally. And I just feel that with 
West Ham leaving Upton Park, they sort of, as, as fans, feel like there's nothing else to go on to. But I believe that there is more to go on to and they can make something of the club with the Olympic Stadium and become the future of West Ham. We went 2-1 down. And at that point, you just thought, you know what, we have fight to come back. And as a West Ham supporter, and I think most West Ham fans can actually say, is that people always believe, even we, that we don't have a right to believe. Like we, we walk into every game, we could play Man City this season and think, oh no, you know what, we could get a win. We've got no right to get a win. Yeah. But we think it anyway. Yeah. We do, we think it, we believe it. And I, I, maybe we're stupid, but we love West Ham anyway, and that's how it is. And at that point, the crowd lifted them up. Yeah. This is the 12th man. The 12th man. It's the noise. I know. I, I wasn't even there. I was sitting in a pub in flipping North London watching it with a Man United fan. And even then, I was like, I just you there. no. I just oh, I was I was sitting next to a Man United fan yeah, yeah. in a pub watching it. And I just remembered when we scored 2-2. Oh. I like had to stifle like a sort of a laugh. And then when the, the second third one went in, I just started giggling like a child. <laughs> I was like, I was like, <laughs> it was. It was unreal, but yeah. Uh, out of ten, what would you give the film? One hundred percent. It's, it's got to be a ten. That is so much. So anyone who's watching this, yeah, no, no, I haven't been paid. I'm literally just a person who watching the watching the film. I'm lucky enough to have a friend who got me in, and it was a fantastic movie. That's all I can say. It, it, it literally brought a tear to my eye on multiple occasions. Gio said it himself that it brought a tear, and he, Gio is a heartless bastard. He, he is. is. I can confirm. He is a heartless bastard. Gio, you're a heartless bastard. <laughs> and, and it was, it was a great movie. Like, it did bring a tear to my eye on multiple occasions. Something else that's getting very rare is a 100 year old fan. Now, I don't know about you, but Mabel in that film was almost the star of it. Every time she came on the screen, the whole cinema almost just stood up in rapturous applause. I mean, you know, saying stuff like, West Ham are doing my nut in and stuff. I mean, she's just, she's just legendary. And I mean, about her age, Charlie, yeah. she's nearly as old as the amount of time we was at the bowling. She's all, she's over four times older than I am. The, thi the things she's seen as well, I mean, she's seen, she's gone through wars and things like that, and she's she's been there week in, week out, and even at 100 years old, you see the passion in the, la she, she, she has got so much passion, you know, and you could see what it meant to her that last game of the season, and even the build up when you see her in her house, I mean, pouring rum in her coffee at 100 years old, you know, I've seen him fall over after a couple of rums, you know, she's still doing it. But no, she, like you said, she was starring for it. And Mark the Ribman as well. I'm glad he got the exposure he did in that because he deserves every minute of it. Uh, uh, we've got back to Mabel. Um, her opinion about West Ham and, and what she's seen over the years. You know, we, we do a lot of things on our channel about, you know, fan cams and things like that, getting people's opinion on, on, on games and West Ham and that. And some of them rant and some of them rave. Her opinion is louder than all of that. Yeah. You could listen to her talk because she's been there through the, the really tough days and she's grown up and she's seen the likes of Bobby Moore. She's seen that era and she's seen all their eras after that. I mean, we some fans now are like 16 years old. They don't even remember players like Zamora playing and things like that, you know. But she, she has seen everything. everything and she's like, for, to see her, for her to see the bowling go, not saying it don't we don't hurt as much as her, but I reckon it does hurt her a little bit more because she's been there for so many years and God bless her, you know, she was here tonight and she like I said she was on form and she got a stand in the fashion, which was rightly well so. deserved. Rightly. Someone who stands out for me is Mabel. Every time she came on that screen, yeah. there was almost a standing ovation for her. Like I mean she's a legend in her own right already, but I mean I think this film almost cements her position as one of the most famous and I think one of the most well liked West Ham fans that there will possibly ever be. Yeah, I think there, there was a few characters in there that we're all um, we're all aware of. Um, some that we see at games or we've seen at games previously. Um, Mabel, as, as an example, and Gary Furbisher as well. I mean, I I grew up with with Oles over there. He was was um, predominant in in my childhood. I, I remember the, the first few copies that um, my dad would purchase that we've still got now. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's part of the fabric of the football club and Mabel epitomises that and, and the, 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 I think she received about three or four round of applause as the film went on 
uh, and some of the comments were <laughs> real from her. Um, she was here but, tonight as well. She was here. Tonight. Yeah, yeah. She I saw her, and I was desperate. Like there are very few people I get like speechless in front of, but I genuinely wanted to run across and be like, "Oh, can I have a photo, Mabel?" But that's it. She epitomises what what this club's about, it, it, and uh, the same way that that Nobes addressed it at the end of last season. It's more than a football club. It is. It is a family. It is a way of life. It's it's what we're all we're all born into and we all understand that it's not just about football because we are used to getting beat, we're used to having the hard times but that makes the good times all that, that little bit sweeter when they do happen. Finally, I guess now we're in the new stadium, that move has happened. Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts about the stadium? What are your thoughts about how we are now, how the atmosphere is, all of that? What are your sort of overriding emotions? For me, I think the Olympic will be great. It will take time. I think the frustrating thing for me is the, there's a lot of people that seem to remember the bowling like the last game when it was amazing. Unfortunately, every game wasn't like that. Um, and I think that's the same thing with now the Olympic. I think it will build up, it'll be great. Um, I like it. It will take time though. And with obviously that many supporters, and that, the other thing is key thing is season tickets, moving around, getting the people in the right places, atmosphere for that will be better. Um, it's going to take time though. A long time, unfortunately. I think the film for me came across, people like Bilic and Noble especially, came across amazingly well. Like they really understood the fans. Do you feel like, now we're at the Olympic Stadium and there's this weird disconnect. Does this almost make it more special to you? Like seeing the players in that light and seeing the manager in that light? Well, it makes it, to me, it feels amazing because you're never going to get the same sort of feeling that we had at Upton Park but at the same time we've got a lot to look forward to in the future and I feel that at the Olympic Stadium we can develop these sort of memories and feelings that we have now. On a scale of uh, 1 to 10, 1 being not at all, 10 being full on crying, how close were you at the end of that film? Uh, probably say an 8, I was pretty close, I don't cry easily, not this man here, this man definitely doesn't, he was probably about 2. but. His two is my nine, <laughs> and uh, no, I was. Uh, it was genuinely. You know, it was one of those things that we know what happened. It wasn't a new film with a different storyline. We know how it works, but you still get those little moments that you get reminded of. And yeah, like that. That it was. It was like a, a Hollywood film. The way that match unfolded itself. It couldn't have gone any better. The storyline, the way it was up, down, up again. And um, I thought the filmmakers captured it perfectly. And I definitely recommend it to. Any West Ham fans that haven't seen it, get involved, go and check it out. If you're not a West Ham fan, but you like, you know, that side of football and you like the emotional side of football and, and the, the many, many layers of our favourite game outside of the pitch, this film encapsulates all of that, so I think it was really well done. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not at all and 10 being just full-blown crying, how close were you to tears at the end of that film? I cried. Yeah, tears come out. I, I wasn't sitting there blubbing. A bit, a bit like the same on the night. I mean, on the night, I didn't cry. He did. It was too much. To, it was there was a lot of t a lot take, to take in the in. day, wasn't it? Yeah, and like you know, because because of what we do as well, I was sort of like, come, I want to get out and document this and all that. And parts of me think I, I wish I'd have stayed in there. I mean, you can go back in. You know, you know, he stayed in for a little while. He couldn't leave. I was like, come, we've got to do these these fan cams and whatever. But you know, everything that went on in that ground that night, it seemed to flash me by. What? You know, what? I was there from one o'clock till midnight, yeah. and it, it, I could have been there for ten minutes, and that's what it felt like. But when I go back and watch that film, it takes me back there, and to see that when that goal goes in, I mean, I get soppy at the fucking best of time. I watched Marley and me on an airplane once, and I fucking nearly got to turn it off because I cried. But it really got me there, and it just got a little lump in my throat and a cut of tear. I had to wipe my eyes, but there was a geezer next to me chatting to me so he, he's, he's i think he stopped me from full crying to be honest with you but yeah i did i did have a little tip that was good uh, there's one thing as well i was when they were showing during the day like the build up to the game i was sitting there thinking to myself at that precise moment me and him were pissed in the pub we was on that statue we, we wasn't throwing bricks and bottles at the man united coach i promise you that but no but look honestly the whole day and it just brought it all back and it's a day that we'll never ever forget. We'll never forget that. And it's good that you've got this film now to watch over and over and over again to relive I, I, it all. Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, dis I'm not disappointed, I'm not disappointed, but I wish I would have been in it. Do you know what I mean? Just to, to relive it. I bet all the people that are in it like properly 
oh, are yeah, really going to be their you know, a saint that... to, to, to really treasure, you know. So I wish I wish we'd have got the phone call to be in it. Um, there was early discussions. They, they made the inquiries about us, but we never really got round to. We weren't available. We were filming uh, uh, Hollywood <laughs> film or something. <laughs> yeah, no, post no, post no, post but I wish I wish you know there was little inquiries at the, when they when they first started thinking about it with uh, with our network, but he never really came to fruition. But I wish he did. I wish he did. <sighs> so that's it. That was the Iron Man premiere. Um, an amazing experience, got to speak to some of the players, got to speak to someone like Ray Winston, who was amazing, uh, could have spoken to him for hours. And the film itself was fantastic. I think it would have been really easy to make a documentary just following maybe Noble or Gold through those last couple of games, but speaking to fans like Mabel, like Mark, like Gary about it, makes it really special. It gives it an emotional resonance that it just wouldn't have had previously, because you know, it's easy to forget in this modern age of football, money and everything else, that it's not about that. It's not about the money. It's about the fans. It's about the people who follow it. And this is such a brilliant insight into those people who follow the club, their emotions and their feelings. And it sums it up perfectly. It's a brilliant snapshot of those last couple of games. Anyway, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe. Cheers.